Welcome to the Podium Couch Drift Track, aka my garage. Today I want to talk to you about the difference between a four-wheel drive and a two-wheel drive drift car to help you make better decision when you get into the drifting of RC cars. Um, when I started, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, went for a uh, cheaper, less upgraded, less intense version of a four-wheel drive drift car. I quickly learned that four-wheel drive drift is not the kind of drifting I was into, it didn't really have the accuracy. I couldn't get into it the way I can with this two wheel drive. So what I've got here is a Flying Fish four wheel drive and a MST RMX 2.0. Um, by far preference to the MST, uh, I'm not super fond of the four wheel drive version. So what I'm gonna do today is open them up and talk about the difference between them. Um, for those of you looking to get into drift, Honestly, probably the biggest thing that makes drifting a good at-home hobby is you don't need a lot of space to do it. Um, get, there's a lot of details that go into drifting, a lot of tunes. Um, it just makes the hobby interesting and you can do it at home. You don't need a lot of space. You don't need to travel to a track. You just need a garage, basically. So we'll go ahead and open them up and I'll explain the differences. All right guys, I've opened up the two cars. Um, we'll go ahead and start by talking about the four wheel drive car. As you can see, the motor is in the rear on this car. It drives the gear back here. That drives both rear tires. There's also a drive shaft leading up to the front with two spindles off to the left and right to drive the front tires. Um, biggest issue that I've had even coming close to a proper drift with this car is you just don't get the steering radius. Your outside tire gets a decent amount of angle left side. Not so much. I've tried to tune it out. Um, like I did say, this is a cheaper version. There are a lot of versions of four wheel drive drift cars. This might not be the best example, but it is what I started out with and quickly learned that even the best version of four wheel drive, I'm probably not gonna enjoy it the same way. Um, what I will say about the HSP Flying Fish, from an upgrade standpoint, I've been able to upgrade the, the uh, C-hubs, the control arm steering, um, rear suspension, all that. Uh, it's really inexpensive comparatively, but all the tweaks and stuff you have to do to just get this car to get around the track from a drift standpoint. Um, in my experience, if I had just started out with the two wheel drive um, and learned a little bit more, then I think I would have been better off. One of the problems I found is there's just not a whole lot of people talking about it. Um, there is content, there is people that'll explain more detail, but ultimately I just don't, Feel like there's enough content out there so i'm making some videos to try to help others out so you don't end up in the same situation as me um, moving on to the mst the rear wheel drive this one as you can see biggest difference we've got a good wide steering angle helps the car get into a really healthy sideways drift um, i'll put together a couple videos after we're done talking about them I'll attach them into this video so that you can see the difference of the two cars on the track. Um, I have done some modifi modifications to this car. One of the biggest things that made a difference was just moving around the setup. So originally when I got this car, the motor right here was mounted down at the bottom. MST does come stock with the option to flip the motor up to the top. So I brought the motor up to the top. MS, or the uh, speed controller used to be mounted up towards the front. I brought the speed controller around to the back. That gave more weight to the back as well as more control to the car. Um, one of the controversial points of two wheel drive drift is the gyro. So what a gyro does is it balances the car out. Uh, some people say it's cheating. If you've driven an actual car around the corner and let off or let go of the steering wheel, you'll notice the wheels automatically go back to neutral position. That is all a gyro does. So by having the gyro, you're not really cheating. You're just making it react like a real car, which makes for more accurate drifting. Um, so really having the rear wheel drive with the gyro 
makes all the difference in the world. Um, the next thing that, and I'll do a whole video on tires because I think that is a big issue for some people. I know when I started out, I wanted to do rubber tires. I quickly learned that rubber is not actually good for drifting. You, when you first start, you think that the uh, plastic tires don't get enough traction. And really it comes down to how you tune the car and learning to drive it. Uh, rubber is actually too sticky. You won't be able to drift it at all. These cars are too light and they stick, the rubber just sticks to the ground. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll do a whole video talking about tires. Um, aside from that, let's go ahead and get them on the track. I will show you guys the differences between them on the track and how they perform. All right, guys, I got the four wheel drive out there. For those of you who can actually drift one of these, mad props to you. I'm going to throw it around the track a few times, but as you'll notice, I have absolutely no accuracy or ability with a four wheel drive drift car. Uh, like I said, maybe it's the uh, the brand, maybe it's the quality of this one, but I will tell you flat out this is going to be ugly. So right, here we go. I feel like you get more drift when you just let off the throttle than you do actually being on the throttle. At least you can control it. Alright guys, let's switch over to the two-wheel drive. Compared to my last run, I think you'll see a huge improvement going from the four-wheel drive to the two-wheel drive. It looks better around the corners, it slides nicely, it has some accuracy to it. Um, so let's check out how this does out here.
All right, guys, let's try a couple technical things with the uh, two cars and see how they compare technically. First off, we're going to try to drift tap this bottle. As you saw, I'm pretty good at getting it with the two wheel drive, but we're going to do it one more time close up. All right. Let's see how many tries it takes with the two wheel drive. Two tries, let's go to the four-wheel drive and see how many tries it takes to hit it with the four-wheel drive car. Here's attempt one of what I expect to be many for trying to tag the bottle. Let me just... Um, I expect this will take several tries, so just bear with me. Almost got it there. Let's try changing the angle of approach on that one. Alright, I think that was like five or six tries to do what I did in two with the two wheel drive. Doesn't look as pretty, I spun out at the end, and I can definitely guarantee you, once you hit it, your car is not going to stay on the track. Not with this one anyways. Alright guys, the next one is going to be how many tries it takes with the four wheel drive to make it through the drift box. I'm not even sure this is possible because I can't keep the car sideways, but we'll give it a try. If I can't do it in about five, we're just gonna give up on it. ST at it and let you guys see the difference. So now I'm gyro got to them off. Alright guys, that wraps up my four-wheel drive versus two-wheel drive comparison. Hopefully it'll help you make your decision as you get into RC Drift. Leave your comments down below. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Like and subscribe. Uh, I'll have more content coming to you soon.